Welcome to our continuing ed webinar on keyword survival strategies. You may have heard there is sort of the keyword apocalypse being rendered on the SEO community by Google. Google is pretty much stopping the providing of keyword data from Google to you in analytics. And as you, you know, keywords are incredibly important for successful search engine optimization. So today's webinar, we're going to look at some survival strategies to help you cope uh, with this new uh, non-keyword provided environment. Uh, so our continuing education webinars, we've tried to make a commitment this year to do one or two a month to help you motivated marketers, and that would be you because, hey, you showed up. Uh, to stay on top of the trends in our internet marketing troika, SEO, AdWords, and social media. We're going to actually do a new top 10 social media tools webinar next month, so stay tuned for that one. We're going to do some hands-on step-by-step stuff today. We're going to look at Google Analytics in particular, and today we're focusing on this whole issue of keywords in Google Analytics, keywords not provided. Oh my goodness, what do we do? What's our agenda? So we're going to talk about why keywords matter, why we care about keywords, uh, what is the reason uh, why as SEO people, as marketers, we care about those keywords. We're going to then drill down to some strategies about how to get keyword data, how to at least manipulate what we have, how to work with what we um, have, and then we're going to go into how to use that data, and then we're going to have time for Q&A question and answer. All right, so let's start our journey with the big picture. Why do we care about keywords? Why do we care what keywords are typing, people are typing into Google, and why as SEO marketers, when we're trying to manipulate Google, Bing, and Yahoo to get to the top, what's the big deal with these keywords? So let's look at our flow. Let's talk about the flow. We'll look at some searches here. Just get our bearings. So first and foremost, people search keyword Google by keywords. They go to Google, they type in a keyword, organic food, organic food for babies, hypnotherapist, herbal cures for male baldness, industrial fan, whatever they're searching. Now, with um, Post Hummingbird, we're getting to this whole, okay, people are talking to Google, but there's still a lot of keywords. How to use the keyword planner. People type that into Google. Where is the nearest pizza restaurant? So those keywords start the process of getting them from Google to you. Now, you're going to rank well because you're going to know how to play the game of search engine optimization. Obviously, we teach SEO. I always feel a little bit like we teach people how to play poker. So you're going to know how to get to the top of a Google search. But that doesn't mean that you get the click. There, You can rank for a keyword and not get a click, or you can rank for a keyword and nobody searches for it. Then you're going to get the click, or you're going to get some clicks, because you've written an awesome title and met a description tag. They're going to land on your landing page or your home page. And then hopefully, guess what's going to happen? They're going to be engaged. They're going to register for a free download. They're going to fill out a consultation form. They're going to buy your tchotchke. Whatever it is, they're going to do something on that landing page, or they're going to bounce. They're going to leave. And we want to know who bounces and who leads. In general, lots of registrations, registration forms, and then you end up with thank you. So as metrics, we want to know that whole process. Now let's go over here to Google, and let's look at a Google search. I'll look at here um, just regular, uh, just talk, talk about just doing a Google search. So we're going to use our, our, our website as an example. So let's just do a search for SEO class. Okay, so we do SEO class. Let's set our, our location to New York. So we're SEO class. So you can see here for SEO class, we are SEO class. We're ranking number two with a location set to New York City. Okay, so your search pattern is first, what are the keywords that people are entering? SEO class, SEO course, SEO training. For you, it could be organic food, organic baby food, organic food for kids. Whatever those keywords are, you've got to know those keywords. You've got to sort of start that process. Number two, okay, then they click from Google to your website, and then they hopefully do your action. They register. They do something, and off you go down your sales funnel. Now, the question and the problem is 
used to be Google would tell you what were the keywords that people are entering into Google for which you're ranking and you're getting clicks. And now what you're getting in your analytics is you're knowing they came from Google Organic, but Google's being naughty and it's not telling you what were those keywords. And that can be for anything, right? It can be for organic food, whatever it is. Here's organic food. I'm going to click over here to the Mayo Clinic. Their report is going to show one click from Google to them through organic, but it's not going to tell them, did I put in organic food? Did I put in natural food? Did I put in Mayo Clinic? They no longer know that directly from Google. That's the problem. That's what we're trying to mitigate, work against. Okay, now let's talk about why we care about keywords. What are the strategies? So much of SEO, as I teach my SEO classes, right, don't get lost in the weeds. Don't get lost in the thicket. Don't get lost in the blur of the blogosphere. Why do we care about keywords? Well, the first reason, the first thing we have to do, we have to discover the superset. The superset is one of Noel's favorite words. I'm always saying to Noel, is it the subset? Is it the superset? The superset is the so, whole universe of what people are searching for. Now, we are going to brainstorm those keywords as SEOs, and we teach lots of tactics to do that. Why? We want high volume keywords. We want to fish where the fish are. Do more people search for SEO class, SEO training, SEO course, learn SEO, SEO guide, SEO tutorial? Do more people search for organic food for babies, organic food for kids? I want to fish where the fish are. Then I want to fish for value. I want to catch those keywords that are transactional. Transactional. Knee pain is an, organ, is an educational keyword. Knee pain, my knee hurts. Knee surgery, I'm getting warmer. Knee surgeon, San Francisco, I'm hot, hot, hot. I'm a transactional keyword. So I'm going to look for high volume keywords that are also high value keywords. And I'm going to look for niches, secret fishing holes, where I can find awesome people to buy my product. So that's sort of the first part. This has not changed because Google has changed the way that keywords work. Now, what has really changed is keyword analysis, which is, do we rank for a keyword? If we rank, is that keyword generating traffic? And is that traffic bouncing or converting? So this second part of keywords is where there's a lot of turmoil because of Google's naughty, naughty little thing of not sharing that data anymore. It's the second element that we need to understand. First element is still the same game. Here's your little fishing icon. I'm very proud of putting that into PowerPoint. All right, so Google Analytics is only reporting, it is always only reported, the traffic for which we are winning. Right, this is my Charlie Sheen, and I actually have two really funny YouTube videos you can go check out about Charlie Sheen doing his winning sort of crazy stuff on YouTube. Now, the issue here is, what are we talking about? Let's go look at a search, right? Let's talk about a search. So, Google.com, SEO class, rank number two, winning, I get the click, right? I got to win to get the click. That's the click. Now, SEO tutorial, Losing, don't show up on this with, with free. Don't show up on an organic. So there is no traffic potential for me for that keyword. You've got to distinguish between the superset, all of the keywords you want to win on, and the subset, the keywords for which you are, one, ranking, and two, getting click-throughs for. That's your Charlie Sheen moment. You've got to focus on your winning inside of analytics, inside of analytics. So. Inside of Google Analytics, which we're going to look in in a second here, the first big conceptual blow your brain is it is only giving you data. It has always only given you data for keywords for which you are winning, meaning you rank on Google and you're actually getting traffic. So for example, if you are a lawyer and you optimize only on lawyer and you don't optimize on law firm, 
You won't get any traffic on Law Firm. It won't show up in your keyword patterns in analytics because you didn't optimize for it. You're not winning. Now, for lawyer, you can then slice and dice your data. So you've got to make sure that you don't think that everything that's in analytics is the superset. It's the subset. It's the Charlie Sheen winning superset. Now, the other issue that's interesting is there are keywords for which we are close to winning. These would be positions 4 to 10. If you're 4 to 10, you're not so great, but you can still get some click activity. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about here, somebody would do a search for, you know, we'll do organic food for babies or something. Now, I don't spell anymore. Google spells for me. Organic food for babies. And let's say you're down here, your organic.org, your babycenter.com. You're going to get some clicks, but of course the lion's share of our clicks always goes top two to three results. So that would mean I'm going to get maybe a few clicks if I'm down here, but not that many. Now, if I'm on page two, I'm probably going to get zero clicks at all. So there's a little distinction between the keywords for which you're really winning and the keywords for which you're close to winning as we sort of set our strategy. And then why do we care about this as marketers? Why do we care? Because we want to brainstorm. We want to look at these keywords and look at the bounce rate, look at the traffic, look at the optimization of our landing pages, look at who converts and who doesn't, which are the yummy fish, which are the good fishing holes, which are the keywords that really make us money. And then we're going to brainstorm ideas for keywords and other strategies. So the challenge is that Google has essentially stopped giving us keyword data in analytics for organic search. And we are like Charlie Sheen in a good way. We want to continue to win. So we've got to adapt to this challenge. That's the road. That's the place. That's where we are. Okay, so now let's drill in and let's look at keyword strategies. And I've created some strategies for you to manipulate your data to cope with this new environment. And we're going to go through, I've given you five strategies on how to cope with this new environment. Number one, extrapolate keyword data in analytics. Number two, use webmaster tools data. Number three, extrapolate via landing pages. Number four, use Bing webmaster tools. And my least favorite, pay AdWords and get some test data. I hate to reward Google uh, for being naughty, but that is one of the strategies. All right, so I'm going to go over to our links, and of course, you're going to get all these links tomorrow, so don't worry about it. It's going to be automatically emailed to you through the magic of GoToWebinar. So if you don't get that email, or if you're watching this recorded version and you're just lost, send us an email and we'll give it to you. We'll make sure you get it. All right, so let's look at strategy number one, and I've, I've written this out sort of step by step, and I'm going to go through the data step by step for us. And we're going to use our account as an example. So I'm going to log in. I'm going to go past. I call these people the Stepford Wives. I'm going to go past the Stepford Wives. I'm going to click on Access. They all creep me out. Every one of those models in the new interface is just, hello, welcome to Google. It makes me creepy. Okay, so I'm going to drill into my Google Analytics account. I'm going to go down to our primary account here. Now let's sort of get the lay of the land and let's talk about what we're dealing with. Okay, so we're in analytics. Let's go over here to acquisition, keywords, organic. And this is the bad boy right here, not provided. And look at how many keywords are not provided. Out of 7,792 visits in organic last 30 days, 7,100, Google is saying, uh-uh, I'm not going to share you, I'm not going to share with you that keyword data. That's our problem. Okay, now let's go up here, and I'm going to set my time horizon to last month to make it really consistent and easy for you to understand. Okay, now, second thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back over here to, or, to my audience view, and I want you to go to this little chevron here. See this little chevron here? That's where advanced segments lives in Google Analytics. Google Analytics is a very powerful software tool. 
I think it needs to be nominated for world's worst user interface. Who on earth put advanced segments beneath the chevron? Nobody even knows to click there. You're going to click there. Oh my goodness, here's all my advanced segments. Then you're going to click over here to built in. Then you're going to click on that little guy there. I have no idea what that is. Looks like, I don't know, maybe some, I don't know what that is. So I'm going to look at that built in to get here so I can actually use the incredibly difficult user interface. I'm going to click on non-paid search traffic. I'm going to uncheck all visits. I'm going to hit apply. And don't worry, this is all being recorded. You can follow those steps yourself. Okay, so now I have an advanced segment on of just my non-paid, aka organic search traffic. Okay, you're with me, right? Now, go down here to organic. So now I'm seeing just my organic. I'm looking at everything organic. Now, here's where we have to, I hate to tell you, you have to do some math. I'm not a big fan of math, I know. Don't freak out. We're all in the post-calculator era. Thank goodness. So see that 6189. Now over here in my steps, I go through and I say how to do this to get to the keywords. Now, that's the total number of visits. That's my total visits that came from organic. Somebody clicked from Google, from Bing, from Yahoo, landed on my website. 5553 is my not provided. So what we're going to do is we're going to do like a statistical sample, and we're going to say there's a little group of keywords for which we know the data, and we're going to use that as a statistical sample. Just like when they predict a presidential election, they go and they pull 200 people, and they can extrapolate and make a projection for the whole United States. Same idea. So I'm going to here, I've done the math for you. I've shown you how to do your math. So you're going to get your total number. You're going to get your not provided number. You're going to gasp, do some subtraction. 6189 minus 553. That means we had 636 visits for which we have keyword data. You're going to calculate your percent provided. 636 over the total, 6189, means approximately 10% of the visits have keyword data with them. This is actually the data probably coming largely from Yahoo and Bing. Now we're going to make our life simpler because we're, multiplication is at least easier than division, and we're going to flip that number upside down. So we're going to take one and we're going to divide it by our percent provided. That's going to give you your multiplier, 9.71 in our case. That's your multiplier. So now you can go back here. So remember 9.71. You can look here and you can see JM Internet Group. That's a search term. So that means 24 people put that number in. That's the provided number. So 24 times 9.7, right? 24 times 9.7 means the actual estimated number of clicks for that keyword is 233. 24 times your multiplier. Now, where is this going? You can build a fabulous spreadsheet. You can do all sorts of analysis now. And all you have to remember is multiply by your multiplier to get your actual keyword data, actual keyword data. So look over here. Google AdWords coupon, 13 clicks. Google AdWords coupon, 13 clicks times my multiplier, 126. So my estimate is, hey, boss. I got 126 clicks through search that contained the phrase Google AdWords coupon. Google AdWords coupon. Now you can do other nifty things with your multiplier. Come up here and put in AdWords. Put in whatever your keyword is. In our case, we have lots of keywords about internet stuff. Now, notice how the not provided goes away. So you could say, gosh, for the word AdWords, we got 126 visits. Now I can take that 126 and I'm going to get my trusty calculator out here and I'm going to put in 126 times 9.71. That means I actually had 
1,223 visits that contained the word AdWords in them. So you see where this is going. You figure out your multiplier and you then extrapolate from your actual search behavior. You can put this in a spreadsheet. You can do all sorts of other interesting, important things. Now, what else do you want to do here? I want to show you. Let's take Google AdWords coupon and I have a nice link to you. Rank is really important to where you succeed. And in your spreadsheets, in your analysis, you want to know, am I ranking for that keyword? So I have a couple nifty little tools here. This is a ranking tool. So you put your domain in here. You put the keywords you're interested in. And it tells me my position is two. Now, why do I care about that position? Go back to Charlie Sheen. If I'm winning, if I'm in positions one, two, and three, I'm kind of maxed out in terms of my traffic. There's not much more I can do. If I do a search, let's see if I can find one here. Um, something a little bit off. Let's try that one. If I do a search and this number is greater than, say, two or three, see there? That tells me this is, I'm getting some traffic for this. Probably they misspelled it. And I'm getting some traffic, but I'm way ranked low, 35. This is a nugget. This is an idea. Hey, Jason, write a blog post on Google AdWords and SEO or something like that. And this number two can be a lot higher because you're not really even ranking on page one. So you want to use this data with some extrapolation, with some rank data, and you can do that onesie, twosie, or you can build a big spreadsheet, and you can then extrapolate your Charlie Sheen keywords, the ones you're winning on, your one, two, threes. You're kind of almost winning four to tens, and you're greater than tens, and then you can feed that data back into your strategy. So this is one really good tool. I also have a nice link for you to the um, SEO book Rank Checker, which is a free tool which will do a nice table format for you. Rank Checker, you have to download that for Firefox. Both of those work with Google Analytics on that rank data. Okay, so number one is to extrapolate. Now I have extra credit, extra credit, because I know you all, you all want extra credit. I want to make sure I have a link to how to get some advanced segments. I got a nice link there. What am I talking about here? What am I talking about here? So let's go back. I think I lost my analytics. So go to google.com slash analytics. I'm going to click past the Stepford Wives. I'm going to go into Access Google Analytics. I'm going to drill down. I'm going to turn back on my advanced segment. Oh, we're going to build an advanced segment for Yahoo Bing, and I want to talk about this. So let's see where I built it this morning. Did I build it here? Here we go. Bing and Yahoo. So let's look at this segment right here, and let's go over here to the gear and click Edit. So your advanced segments, you can build some nifty ones yourself. So Go to your Chevron, medium is organic, go down to conditions, right, because they've named everything with insane words that help you not at all. Go to conditions, source contains Bing, source contains Yahoo. So this little advanced segment is going to tell me my Yahoo and Bing data. I'm going to hit save. That's going to turn that on. So now you can see it's a tiny fraction of our searches coming from Yahoo and Bing. Every night when I go to bed, I say a prayer, Dear God, please help Yahoo and Bing, so that the search market becomes more competitive and Google cannot be so naughty. So far, God has not answered my prayer. Yahoo and Bing are still struggling. Okay, now, I've got that turned on. Let's go back over here to Acquisition, Keywords, Organic, and you can see there's going to be no, not provided. This is my subset. We're really extrapolating from Yahoo Bing data to Google data, and we're hoping and praying that people are using kind of the same keywords on Yahoo and Bing that they use on Google. So please, Yahoo and Bing, don't stop giving us data, or we're really going to be up the creek without a paddle. All right, that's strategy one to regain and at least be able to, to make some educated guesses about this keyword data. Let's look at strategy number two, which is Webmaster Tools data. Now let's go back to analytics, go past the Stepford Wives, click down into your account, go over here to acquisition, keywords, 
I'm sorry, acquisition, search engine optimization, queries, if you haven't connected this data to Google Analytics to Webmaster Tools, you'll get a little annoying thing here that'll say, please connect your analytics account to your Webmaster Tools account. And then you're going to follow that rigmarole. And I've had to do this three, four, five times sometimes to actually start to get the data to flow. So typical Google fashion, it's not perfect. So you're going to follow that data. You're going to get that data to work. Then you can click descending and you can start again to see what keywords am I winning on. Now here's the problem. They don't, you can't really analyze this data and get a sense of this keyword, you know, where did it go, who did they land on. They don't allow you to analyze based on this data as far as I can see. So you kind of can use this. This is Google data. So you can use it as a checkup against your Bing Yahoo data and say, okay, am I kind of seeing the same keyword patterns on both Google and on Yahoo? And that you get from search engine optimization queries. You have to connect that to Webmaster Tools. Now, that is also available, google.com slash webmasters. Go to Webmaster Tools. Sign into your Webmaster Tools account. Go down to Webmaster Tools, sign, down to your, sign into your account here, over here under Search Traffic, Search Queries. This is the same data. This data now lives in Webmaster Tools. It lives in Analytics. I believe they only are giving it for 90 days, so if you're really gung-ho about data, you may want to download this data every month and save it because they don't save the data, I believe. That's option number two is get Webmaster Tools data. Option number three, landing page extrapolation. So you're going to log in, then you're going to select a landing page that you can infer keywords for. Now, what are we talking about here? So you're going to log in. Let's start at the beginning. Let's go over here. Let's turn on our segment. So click on the Chevron. Go down to the Chevron and find the non-paid search traffic. Turn that on just for because we really want to look at our non-paid search traffic, right? That's what we're looking at. Okay, so now you've turned that on, and our strategy here is we're going we're gonna to extrapolate from a landing page. Okay, so then we're going to go down here. We're going to go down to Behavior, Site Content, Landing Page. So remember, we've got a filter on. These are our top organic pages. So this is number one page. 3,800 visits. Now, click on that page, go up to, to Keywords, and again, you're going to see you're not provided, but you can use your multiplier and you can extrapolate how did people get to this page. That's sort of one reverse tactic there on your landing pages. What else can you do? Go back to the landing page. Let's choose this landing page. Let's look at this landing page. Okay, so here's our landing page. Where did it go? Here's the landing page, and you can do some tricks here. For some reason, it gives you a double slash. I don't know why. So that's the landing page. This is a landing page I wrote about AdWords coupons, tutorials, um, how to get AdWords um, free money, essentially. So I'm going to copy that URL. Over here, I have some tools to help you infer what the keywords are. So. Click to the Keyword Planner. This is another tool that Google has. I have a YouTube on how to use this tool. We're going to click here, I believe. Yes, we're going to click on this guy. We're going to paste the domain, the URL that we just are interested in. We're going to click Get Ideas. We're going to click Keyword Ideas. And now you can start to see Google is looking at this URL. So if you think about it, Google is looking at the URL and it's inferring the keywords for us. So this is another way to infer, hey, if people are hitting this landing page through organic, they're probably typing in things like AdWords promo code, AdWords um, coupon code, etc. Remember, take your rank checker tool, copy that tool there, control C. I like to I just have it bookmarked. Put in my web address. So they've made us work harder, but we can still work harder, not smarter. 
Where's my rank there? It's not that good. So that tells me that might be an opportunity for that keyword. Now look over here, get a different keywords. Google AdWords coupons, control C, paste that over here. So it's helpful. Why am I doing this? It tells me where I need to work, where I don't need to work. So you can see where you can feed this data back into your blog strategy, your link building strategy, your content strategy, and you can start to get some great ideas. Where am I strong? Where am I weak? So that's a good way to infer data. Now I have another way you can infer data. Let's take that URL. Let me get that URL again, darn it. Let's take that URL here, control C. I have a nice link to SEO Central's tool. You can paste the URL that you're, this is your landing page. This is the page, this is your Charlie Sheen winning page. It's bringing in traffic. And you're trying to figure out what are the keywords. This tool gives you a nice tag cloud, gives you your keyword density. Again, you can start to infer some of your keywords here, especially when you look at your double and triple, your two and three word phrases. Then go back. Hey, where do I show where I've done I show? So it's a little messy, but this is another alternative way to infer keywords. That's number three on the list of strategies. Okay, number four, strategy. So, okay, everybody, I don't care if you're atheist, you know, religious, whatever, whatever spirituality you have, let's all send some spiritual love to Bing Webmaster Tools because they are still providing data for us. So we're going to sign in to our Bing Webmaster Tools. Okay, so we want Bing Webmaster Tools. I hope I got this right. There we go. I'm going to sign in, and you want to sign up for Bing Webmaster Tools because they are giving us better data than Google. I'm going to drill down into my website. I'm going to click over here to Reports and Diagnostics, Search Keywords, and Google and Bing, right? Bing is sort of number two. It tries harder. It's a lot nicer than Google is in terms of providing data. You can see here it gives us our data. Now, I recommend click on the Clicks from Search. It's going to give you Descending. Click until you get it to descend for you. Come on. There we go. And you're going to see here a search phrase, Google AdWords phone number, and you can just go do a Google search or you can pop it into another tool and see, hey, am I ranking on Google for that as well? Let's see, am I ranking? Usually I'm ranking for this. Maybe I'm not ranking today. But the idea is you can check in Google and see. Now what else can you do? Click over here to served pages and it'll tell you what page Bing returned for that keyword phrase. So Bing is, gives you much better data than Google does, again, you're going to extrapolate from this data back to your Google account. So sign up for Bing Webmaster Tools. Send Bing some positive spiritual energy so that we get a more competitive uh, market here. And then you can use Bing data to extrapolate. That's number four. Number five is a little bit, let's go to the dark side. You can go and sign up for AdWords periodically and use AdWords data inside of Google Analytics. Let me show you how this works. Okay, so we're going to go past the Stepford Wives, and I want to be gender neutral, right? There's some creepy male Stepford husbands. We're going to go beyond them. We're going to click on Access Google Analytics. We're going to go into our website. If we're running on AdWords, what you can do is run some broad match ads on AdWords. So set aside a two-week period. Take your broad match keyword, organic food, in our case, SEO, SEO class, run some AdWords data. Unfortunately, you have to give Google some money. People are going to click on your ads. You're going to then get that keyword data. Google is sharing the keyword data with AdWords advertisers. Go down here to acquisition, keywords, paid. Okay, now under paid, Click on Matched Search Query, and you're going to see the queries. Now, there's still some not set here. I don't know why that's here on this example. It shouldn't actually be there. You're able to see the match search. These are the actual queries coming in 
from Google AdWords, and then you can use this as a data set with which you can extrapolate back. So it's kind of like the way we use Bing Yahoo data. You can use AdWords data to extrapolate over good keywords, good keyword matches. So that's another alternative, run on AdWords. So I've given you five ways to, to compensate for Google's lack of keyword data. Number one is really the basic way, extrapolation based on a little mathematics. Number two is Webmaster Tools. Number three is sort of a backwards extrapolation based on landing page behavior. Number four is going directly into Bing Webmaster Tools and using their data, using your Bing uh, performance as a surrogate. And number five is using paid AdWords data. All right, so now let's sort of start to wrap up. Let's think about what are we going to do with this data? We're going to use our winning keywords and we're going to extrapolate and then we're also going to do analysis on the conversion rate, the bounce rate on the landings. That's what we really want to get. If we're winning, we're getting keyword traffic, then the issue shifts to <clears throat> are people converting, are they bouncing, what's the landing page ex experience. If you're in those lower positions, 4 to 10, how do you get up to the better uh, positions. We're also going to take the short tail and make a superset. So what are we talking about here? We're going to use our data. We're going to look at our landing page data. We're going to work on, this is the first path. We're going to look at improving our user experience, improving the, 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 the conversion rate, getting a better user experience. So the more people that land, the more actually convert. That's one thing we're going to do by looking at who is coming on what keywords, which keywords are better converters than others, that type of idea. What else can you do? You're going to take a short tail keyword from your analytics data. You're going to go to some of these wonderful tools. So you can take a short term tool, short keyword phrase from your analytics data, in our case SEO class, and you can type that in to Suval to Uber suggest, and you can start to see alternatives. Let's do organic food just for more, a more, more sort of simple one. Organic food, organic food coupons, put in organic food coupons. And now why do you do this? These keywords, blog post ideas, better optimization on your landing pages, better product pages, etc. So Suval is a nice one. Uber suggest is a nice one as well. These keywords get you to the superset. So think of, don't think about either I'm going to use Google Analytics or I'm going to use Keyword Discovery Tools. I'm going to use Google Analytics and I'm going to use Keyword Discovery Tools because I'm going to know the difference between the superset of all possible keywords, the subset of the keywords I want to win on, and the, the micro subset of the ones I'm actually winning on. And I'm going to be very strategic in my keyword strategy. So I have some some nice other tools there for the superset. I have a little line here. Don't confuse the superset, all the possible keywords, with the subset, those for which you're winning. Keyword discovery is not the same as winnable keywords, and Google has not changed the game at the superset level. So we're going to stay tuned in terms of our attitude about learning. We don't know. Google's changing a lot of rules these days in SEO. They've taken away keywords. They've changed the way they work with the keyword planner. Of course, they've rolled out the terrible penguin, the terrible panda. We've got to stay on tune on that. I have reference articles in the uh, instructor links here. You can read. I really went through and I called out the better articles on this whole problem, and they're a little nerdy, they're a little bit hard to read, but I have some nice articles I want to refer you to uh, from some people who have written on the topic as well uh, as I have, and of course I want to encourage you to stay tuned uh, for our uh, free webinars. Okay, so wrapping up, what are our to-dos here in this new keyword not provided era? We're going to understand, sadly, Google is no longer providing organic search keyword data. We're going to write a letter to our congressman that this is an abuse of Google's power. We're going to pray to whatever spirituality we have that Bing and Yahoo do better. We're going to sign up for Bing Webmaster Tools so that we can get data from 
Bing directly. We're going to deploy our five survival strategies that I've showed you in our webinar. We're going to build spreadsheets and start to analyze our data through a little extrapolation. We're going to use that keyword data wisely and we're going to distinguish among the keywords that were winning. Those are the top three positions. The keywords that were close to winning, those are four to ten page one positions, and we're going to use keywords to help us generate ideas, and we're going to recycle this data into our strategy so we become better and better and better, and we can be Charlie Sheen in a good way and keep winning. Okay, so we have just about uh, 18 minutes for Q&A. Noelle will um, give us some questions, and we'll circle back to our keyword issues. Okay, we actually, <clears throat> sorry, we actually have a variety of different um, questions. I'm going to start sort of with the more basic ones. Is it okay to use the same keyword on a landing page and a blog post or on multiple posts? Yeah, so that is more, that gets more to implementation, okay? So what you want to think about, and again, we, you know, we teach this in the classes, and a lot of people struggle with this. I'll just show you real quickly from the progressive website that I like to use when I teach the classes. What you want to think about is architecture. Home page, one click from the home page down to very specific landing pages. The landing pages are connected to the home page and the site navigation through keyword phrases, very, very, very focused on specific types of keywords. You have a nice landing page, and then inside of the landing page, you have additional pages, in which case uh, blog posts would qualify, that are supporting that landing page. So think about it like a little, uh, you know, uh, pyramid with the home page being at the top, the landing page is one level down, and then lots of derivative supporting pages that, that flow link juice and link sculpt up to this up to the higher pages. So it's not either or, it's that it's it's who does what. The landing page is the anchor. You know, in this case it's very clear this is the fundamental anchor page for motorcycle insurance, but they also have sub pages helping that page out. Uh, what we're talking about today is that Google is not going to give them the data. Is it motorcycle insurance? Is it motorcycle insurance? Quote, they're going to have to extrapolate and work a little bit harder um, on that data set. Okay, let's see. Um, what about using paid tools like SpyFu or Moz for keyword analysis? Yeah, okay, so I think that's a great issue. Now, here's the deal with that. None of the providers have the source of the data. The data source is Google. Google has, depending on how you count, 70 to 100 percent of the market. They're the fountainhead of the data. SpyFu and these paid tools, they don't have any way of getting this data that we don't have. So all they're able to do is extrapolate. So they're going to be forced over time. Now, right now they might use historical data to extrapolate, Right, but the problem is that data will change over time. Because Google is essentially a monopoly, it holds this data and it's not sharing. So they don't have any better ways than we do at extrapolating. They might make it easier. They, I'm sure they'll put some bells and whistles. They'll make it a little bit easier to extrapolate the data, but they don't have a magic bullet uh, because Google isn't sharing the data. So it's not that they're bad, it's that the the paid tools are in the same boat that you and I are in. We're not getting the data flow from Google. Okay, let's see. This is a really popular question. A Google expert, quote unquote expert, with a short SEO tutorial said we no longer need to enter meta keywords. Just enter the meta title and description. Is this true or no? Yes, that is true. Okay, so, so here's where there's so much confusion. Uh, about how keywords work um, on the internet, on uh, SEO, et cetera. And you've got to always kind of think of what are we talking about, different sorts of issues. So first, let's address this issue of tags. Again, in our class, we teach tag structure, explain the whole game. Let's just look at the source code uh, for this page on Progressive. So here's your source code. Don't freak out. Uh, I don't want to give you math and source code in one session, so don't freak out here. Now, you're going to go in your source code, and you're going to see there's three really important meta tags. Your title tag is absolutely critical, very important, very, very important trigger 
to showing up on Google. Your meta description is a suggestion to Google about how you should be interpreted, how you should be described on the Google search engine display. This bad boy here, meta keywords, is ignored. So the confusion is people will go, keywords are ignored. Google doesn't care about keywords. No, no, no. The meta keywords tag is ignored. So you can use this tag. It doesn't hurt you. It doesn't help you. I use it as note to myself. I think most people use it just sort of, why not? It doesn't hurt. But realize the really important stuff are the other tags on the structure. Now, what else is going on that's very confusing? There's what's called the Hummingbird Update. And um, I hope you don't believe everything that you hear on the radio, everything that you read in the blogosphere, uh, everything that you watch on CNN, right? There's a lot of noise and conversation and just plain dumb articles and blog posts and conversation. So because of Hummingbird, which is an attempt by Google to move really to more conversational speech patterns, so Google is allowing us to talk to Google, to use it on our phone. There's an effort by Google to do a better job at interpreting conversational search and sort of leading questions. The idea is if you put in here height, you know, you put in here Washington Monument, the idea would be, and then the next search query is height of it, that they would realize you're talking about the Washington Monument. Hummingbird is an attempt to move towards natural search patterns. Now, the blockosphere went crazy over Hummingbird, and every two-bit blog writer wrote a blog post that said, everything's changed, keywords don't matter, it's all conversational, just write good content. That's all a bunch of poppycock, in my opinion. So that's another area where people have sort of thrown the baby out with the bathwater, and they've said keywords don't matter anymore because of Hummingbird. There's a million data points you can show that is not true right now. I don't think it will ever be true because of the way that people talk and think, and Google cannot change the linguistic reality of how language works, or hopefully it can't. Uh, so that's another issue where I do get a lot of people saying, wow, I've read Hummingbird, throw out the whole baby. Keywords don't matter. No, no, no. So that's another area of confusion is semantic search and its impact on keyword data. Okay, let's see. I really like this question a lot. All right, I'm going to read it as they wrote it. I routinely view the hits on pages two through four, sometimes even further if I haven't found something close to what I'm looking for. My experience is that exactly what I'm looking for is found on those pages if it is not on page one. So I take the time to look. Am I the only person in the world doing this? <laughs> yes, pretty much. You're about, I mean, three of us that do that. Now, it is true that on some keyword patterns, right, so what we're talking about is somebody goes to Google and, you know, they're going to put in uh, motorcycle uh, insurance uh, for my Harley or something. This gets to your conversational search. And they're not going to be satisfied with what they see on page one, and they're going to go to page two, and they're going to go to page three. Now, there is a tiny percentage of people who are that diligent, and there are tiny types of searches for which people are really looking for that needle in a haystack, and they will go down levels beyond page one. However, most of the fish are on page one, and most of the fish on page one our positions one, two, three. There's many statistical analyses about that. You can see it in your own rank data. When you rank on position two, you get a lot of traffic. When you rank on position 12, you get almost none. So just because a few people do that doesn't mean most people. Most people in most searches, we're pretty much talking about page one. We're pretty much talking about the top three. There's a little back and forth. You know, this one sticks out because she's got her picture there. Uh, there's some blended search. You know, if you if you do a search for pizza, you're going to see the carousel. But by and large, no. Most people do not go beyond page one. So that's your rank. You've got to be on page one to really be in the game. You've got to be in those top one to three positions to really be uh, making the money, getting the clicks. 
Okay, once you discover the keywords that you need to work on, how would you improve those rankings, mainly through link building or? Right, so that's what we teach in our classes, right? So this little webinar is only about, hey, how do I know my keywords in analytics? What do I do? In our classes, we teach you, like, where do you put the keywords? That's your on page. How do you build your website? How do you build links? How do you use Google Plus and social mentions? That's the whole enchilada of SEO, is what are the strategies that you use to push your rank up to the top of Google. When you rank high, right, when you take a search, you know, and you, you do, you can do this yourself, right, you do a search for, you know, SEO classes, right, the reason that we show at the top there is because we do a lot of SEO to get to the top. That's not accidental. There's a lot of work and a lot of knowledge on page, off page. So first, you got to know your keywords. Then you got to implement, and that's what on-page and off-page SEO is all about. And of course, that's a 10-hour class as opposed to, uh, you know, just a, a two-second answer. Okay. Um, let's see. This is a more in-depth question. This is a tiny bit off topic, they say, but it has to do with Google changes. They, I thought that was required to better differentiate SEM results from organic ones as part of a settlement with the government, and that they were supposed to make the background on the SEM results more clear. But they've noticed in the, in the last few weeks that the shaded background is now completely gone. So how are they getting away with that? <laughs> okay, yeah, that is a little bit off topic. So, you know, there's a whole jockeying going on. Google, the FTC, the European community, Google's in hot water. When they're talking about shading, what we're talking about here is when you do a search on Google, on some of your browsers, you know, the the searches, the, the, the ads, you can barely see, you can barely see that that's orange. It's, it's hardly indicated. They got in trouble with the FTC over that. Uh, the other issue, and I think this is where the keyword not provided really stemmed from, you know, the NSA, the security scandal, the lack of privacy, I think Google felt as a corporation, how do we sort of show some goodwill? Uh, and one way to do it is to throw the SEO community under a bus, so we'll stop giving keyword data to third parties. That makes us look like we care more, but we still have to give that data to our AdWords advertisers, and of course we're still going to use it for ourselves. So it was a little bit of a way for Google, uh, you know, to show some good graces without having to do anything uh, that really um, hurt them or hurt their advertisers. That's my totally unsubstantiated reading of the politics uh, about why we went to this not provided universe. Okay, and this student wants to know, they still don't understand why has Google made these changes in the first place? So that's sort of the question I just answered. I mean, y y we can sort of argue about why they did it. That sort of gets to your conspiracy, you know, who shot JFK type of issue. Leaving that aside, don't worry about why they did it. Just realize, you know, go into your analytics. You can check this on your own analytics. Go to your Google Analytics account. And again, all of you who have analytics, drill down into your analytics. Go down to acquisition, keywords, organic, and I guarantee you that every one of you is going to see a huge percentage not provided. And they just don't explain very much what is that. So most people, I think, don't understand what that means. What that means is we're not sharing that keyword data with you anymore. We have it, but we won't give it to you. So who cares why they made the change? We could, you know, hypothesize. We're just the little people who use the Google data. The reality is they do not give us the data anymore, but it's very important uh, to our SEO because we all know keywords are how people use Google. We've got to know our keywords. We've got to know what we want to win on. We've got to know what fish we want to catch. Okay, let's see. Uh, this person says the extrapolation idea is they're saying it, it's only valid if, if the reported search terms are a representative random sample of the non-reported ones. So do you have any evidence that the reported ones are actually representative of the non-reported? Yeah, so that is exactly the, that is the crux of the problem. That's like polling data, right? You can poll 500 people, and if they're not a representative sample of the United States, you can make the incorrect extrapolation. I, we, we're too early in it, and we don't, because we don't have the Google data, we don't really know. Now, what you can do, that sort of gets to this point, I should stay signed in, darn it, 
uh, what you want to do, you know, to compare this is look at your data, right? So here's how you'd sort of get the two. L look at your data. Go, go down here to acquisition, keywords, organic. And what you're going to find if you, if you set up a filter set for a, a Bing and Yahoo, this is largely the Bing and Yahoo data. So then you can look, look at that data, that's your Bing and Yahoo data, go over here to this data, the search engine optimization query, this is your Google data, and compare, so see Google AdWords coupon, AdWords coupon, Monopoly, which is an image search, SEO training, look at those keywords, go back over here, look at those keywords here, and you can see they're roughly the same. So you do have some access to the Google data through Webmaster Tools, the Yahoo Bing data in analytics, you could compare the two, and I think you can be reasonably certain they're pretty close. What we've lost absolutely is that fine level of granularity about all sorts of other ways we could slice and dice this data. We've lost some of our, you know, our fingers. We have our thumbs left for the high-level uh, picture. So we're going to run out of time. Noelle's going to wrap us up. This was a quick webinar, so you're all aware of how to deal with keyword not provided. What's so fun about SEO, we're always learning. It's always changing. Google certainly makes our life interesting by rolling out these changes. We'll have a really exciting webinar in December on top 10 social media tools. So I hope you can sign up and be alerted uh, for that. Thank you, and Noelle will wrap us up. Okay, great. Thank you, Jason. So we are out of time, but I do want to thank you all for attending today's continuing education webinar. Any questions that were unanswered, Jason will get to by email. So our next continuing education webinar is going to be December 13th, and it's going to be on the top 10 tools for social media. Our paid training series on SEO begins December 5th, with the first class being on keywords, and this is the first of our seven course series on SEO. You can find out more information and sign up for any of these classes by going to our website at jm-seo.org. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us or give us a call. Our contact info is on the screen, and we're always happy to help you out with anything you need. So for now, have a great rest of your day, everyone. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving, and we'll see you all real soon at the top of Google. Bye-bye. <laughs>